When people think of dermatology, they often just think of Botox and acne, but I'm here to tell you that that's far from the truth. Hey, I'm Dr. Michael Park. I'm a dermatology resident, and today I'm gonna to be breaking down what people think dermatology is versus what it's actually like. So let's get into it. Myth number one is that dermatology is all Botox and fillers. While it's true that we do a lot of procedures, the majority of them are actually not cosmetic. And it might surprise you, but cosmetic procedures are not the first priority when it comes to our dermatology training. First, we have to get good at the basic everyday tasks, which includes biopsies, cryotherapy, which is using liquid nitrogen to freeze precancerous lesions usually. Electrosurgery, which has been classically used to treat non-melanoma skin cancers like basal cell carcinoma. And we also learn more complex skin surgery like excisions, and then some go on to Mohs surgery, which is more complicated. And a lot of times, like in the case of melanoma or a really aggressive invasive squamous cell carcinoma, it's really important that we know how to do these surgeries well, because although it's not a life or death situation in that very moment, like a trauma surgeon would experience, if we do the surgery wrong and don't completely get the cancer out, especially especially in the case of melanoma, it very well could become a life and death situation later on. Myth number two is that derm is a chill nine to three lifestyle specialty. Now, while it is true that a lot of dermatologists have great lifestyles compared to other medical specialties, if you see a dermatologist who's absolutely killing it financially and only works a few days a week, know that they worked their absolute ass off in order to get there. Also, in terms of our residency training, we're not at the hospital or in clinic as much as other specialties like surgical specialties, but when we're in clinic, it's often chaotic and we're seeing a patient every 10 to 15 minutes. And a lot of people don't know that we do in-hospital consultations for dermatology, which includes calls. So you could be paged at 2 a.m. for a life-threatening drug reaction or something as simple as acne. But don't page me at 2 a.m. for acne. While we're on the topic of acne, myth number three is that dermatology is just acne, rashes, and prescribing creams. Now, I will admit we do prescribe a lot of creams in dermatology. And I get from an outside point of view that it looks like we're just kind of throwing steroid creams at everything, but we actually manage over 3,000 different different skin conditions, a lot of which can look the same to an untrained eye. These include complex autoimmune conditions like lupus, dermatomyositis, pemphigoid, other autoimmune blistering diseases. And you can't forget vasculitis, which can also involve other organs like your kidneys and your lungs and can turn life-threatening. In fact, there are so many autoimmune conditions that affect both the skin as well as other parts of the body that there's often close collaboration between dermatologists and rheumatologists to best treat patients. With more potent but selective immune modulators, dermatologists are prescribing a lot more biologics, which require a pretty deep understanding of the immune system. And we also have to be aware of potential side effects. And if that medication doesn't work, what well, we can move to next. So long story short, it is not just acne and creams. Myth number four is that there are no emergencies in dermatology. Now I can tell you firsthand that this is absolutely false because in the last month, I've seen at least four dermatology emergencies that required prompt recognition of what was going on and then prompt treatment. The classic drug reaction that almost every medical student learns is Stevens-Johnson syndrome slash toxic epidermal necrolysis. This is a life-threatening drug reaction where the top layer of your skin basically just gets super inflamed and then falls off. And the reason why it's life-threatening is because when it reaches the toxic epidermal necrolysis stage, it involves a lot of time over 30% of your body surface area. It sounds terrifying because it is. Google it if you're curious, but trigger warning. There are other life-threatening emergencies like dress syndrome, which stands for a drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms. The reason why it's an emergency is because the immune system is so overactivated that it starts attacking your internal organs. And this includes most often the liver, but also the kidneys, lungs, heart. Again, important to recognize early, which does take a trained eye. And if only there was a specialty that was trained to recognize these specific reactions early. Oh wait, myth number five is that dermatology isn't real medicine, it's just a spa specialty. Now don't get me wrong, I love my skincare routine and putting all that stuff on my face before bed, but a lot of people don't realize that dermatology is medicine, surgery, pathology, rheumatology, and even psychiatry sometimes all in one specialty. And from the outside, it can seem pretty simple because we diagnose things pretty quickly just by looking at it, but there's so much internal thought process going on behind that decision-making. Now I'm gonna give an example of melanoma because that's what I'm most familiar with. But if I walk into a clinic room and I see a mole that sticks out and it doesn't look like anything else, and I take my dermatoscope and I look at that mole and compare it to other moles on the body, not only does that mole stand out on a macro level, but I also know that the majority of the other moles on the patient have a consistent pigment pattern. But when I look at the mole that sticks out, I notice things that are signs that the melanocytes or the pigment producing cells in there are growing out of control. So again, from the outside, it seems like Dr. Park sees weird color must cut off when actually there's a pretty systematic clinical pathology correlation that's going on in my brain to decide if I'm going to biopsy the lesion or not. And last but not least, myth number six is that
that everyone in dermatology has it easy. Although dermatology seems super shiny and easy and happy on the outside, it is one of the most competitive specialties to get into. And this last match cycle, it was actually the hardest specialty to get into. People who get into dermatology, and I can say from personal experience, grind for years. You're trying to get good grades from day one in preclinicals, score in the top percentiles of your medical boards where you're literally competing with every other medical student in the country, get tons of research and actually publish it, which is a whole adventure in itself, and perform really well clinically, especially in dermatology, where you don't really know anything because they don't teach that much dermatology in medical school. Also, some of the hardest working and smartest physicians that I know are dermatologists. For example, I was working with one the other day. A cancer patient came into our clinic who had a rash that was thought to be due to their chemotherapy. And the rash was so painful and severe that the cancer doctor or the oncologist was actually holding the treatment because the patient couldn't tolerate it. And this dermatologist looked at the rash and then they looked at the chemotherapy drug that they had held and she said, they held the wrong one because she knew based on the rash's distribution and also the rash's morphology, which is basically the shapes and colors that it makes on the skin, that the vital chemotherapy drug to treat this patient's cancer that was stopped because they thought that it was the one causing the rash was actually the wrong one. And what needed to happen was not a complete discontinuation of a chemotherapy drug, but just a slight dose reduction in another one that the patient was receiving. So because of this dermatologist and her knowledge, this patient was actually able to continue the chemotherapy that they needed to treat their cancer. So to close, I hope you learned that dermatology is more than just acne and Botox, but that it's highly procedural and broad where we get to diagnose anything from skin cancer to complex autoimmune diseases. If you like this breakdown, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment what surprised you the most. Also, please let me know what other topics you'd like to hear about, and I'll see you next time.